Shaul, you mentioned in a prior interview about the late Tim Hetherington of Restrepo and other um, journalists who have lost their lives on assignment. How many times a day, a week, did it cross your mind that the same thing could happen to you? You know, you try not. I've been a photojournalist for a very long time, and um, you kind of try not to think about it while you're always thinking how to stay safe. Um, this film was definitely taking a risk. You know, the decision going down there is that we're going to make a drug war film that's not going to be experts, it's not going to be talking heads, that's going to put you in the front row and really make you feel, not learn, but really feel what it feels like to be in horrors, to be in this reality, to be in the midst of it. So sure, we had a couple of bad runs, and I've had colleagues, including Tim Heatherton, that have died, but I, f I think you kind of, you know, you really concentrate on, on being careful and on pushing and doing what you want, and you kind of block out at the same time this, wow, this could be over like that. Um, and that was, that was kind of the balance that we struck. We, we ended up going to Juarez more than 20 times. We always stayed for a very short time. We, we had our little systems in place. It was a very small two-man crew. We tried to not be visible. We tried to not step on any wrong toes, not open stuff we shouldn't. Does the question cross your mind, why make a film if it may be my last time? No, because, and I think that that was actually Tim's Heathington message to me. Like, he didn't know where, he didn't, he barely knew Libya, uh, but you never know when it's going to happen if it does. And if you always think that way, then us, photojournalists, filmmakers that really go to the front lines, will never do any of it. Because if you live in fear, then it's possible anywhere. I could step outside and, and something would happen. So you got you to gotta push. Everybody has their own destiny. Very true. Yes. And for you, Edgar, with the narco corrido movement, is it more about respect than just sort of guns and, and drugs and, you know, the money and women? Is it more about rising up and people gaining aff affluence through this whole Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's about respect everywhere you go, not only in that. I, I think uh, if you respect the next man, he'll respect you back. And, um, and sometimes uh, people, I guess, they want to feel good by um, listening to this type of music, or any type of music, anything that makes you feel good, you want to listen to it, right? Mm -hmm. and, and in my type of business, you can actually call me up, and if you want, and you know, I'll write a song about you. <laughs> and, 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 I, and I go back on that. If there's a certain line that you gotta you know, put yourself, and just don't cross that. And don't disrespect anybody, and you'll be good. And, yeah. Well, I read one of the comments on YouTube, and it was in Spanish, and I put it in Google Translate, and it said, um, there are countless ways to change the world, but the way these individuals behave, it's like a volcano about to erupt. What are your thoughts? Um, what, what individuals? Us? Uh, the, the, the whole narco movement, <laughs> yeah. The, the, there are ways to, to change and to rise up, but is this the right way to do it? It's been erupting since 1910, because that's like the farthest corrido that I know. So I guess it's, it's, it's a non-empty volcano. <laughs> no, it's, uh, I don't, um, how, how can I say this? It's, 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 just, uh, it's just what's in. It's, sure. it's, 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 it's something popular, I guess. It, it's, if, if, um, if it's a volcano today, tomorrow's going to be an avalanche. But it doesn't matter. Something's always going to happen. <laughs> well, there's a great scene in the film where you're on a farm, and I think you commented how peaceful and calm it was. Do you ever long for that life? Yeah, that's why I say sometimes I would love to go and live in Mexico. <laughs> I would love to go, and I, I, I don't know, there's been plenty of times when I sometimes I tell myself, maybe in another life you were out in, 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 some, in some ranch with cows, and, because sometimes I feel like, even though I'm born and raised in Los Angeles, California, I feel like I'm, I can, I can um, relate more to people from the ranch than people from the city. And I guess it, it just it does make you, it makes me feel a little more peaceful when out out in Mexico. It does. Did I hear you say that you feel that the war on drugs is essentially hopeless? Um, you know, I, I don't know if it's hopeless, but it's not looking good. And it's this thing that we love tucking away in the U.S. It's it's Mexico's drug war. That sounds really far, 
although 50, 40 to $50 billion a year come from here, guns come from here, the demand comes from here. So it's hopeless if we don't change it. It's in our hands. We have to at least make a real attempt. And, you know, and, and part of the reason to making this movie is because people always said, oh, it's just gangsters killing gangsters. No, it affects everybody. Edgar's songs don't reach only gangsters. Actually, the majority of them are great American Latino kids who go to a party scene and, and to, to connect to something that they hear about. But if we let the bad guys win, if impunity is so vast, then it is hopeless because what, one thing is that's not going to stop and we've got to be real is the demand and the price and the, the huge business here. It hasn't stopped for many, many years. So right now, if you live through it like I did, it feels hopeless. In Richie's world, in, in Juarez, yes, it feels very hopeless. It's so sad. You, you can't, this irony that we saw again and again, sure, it broke my heart. It felt like nobody's paying attention and everything's obvious. I think you quoted Mexico's president, we're living next to the biggest drug addict in the world, which is the U.S. I mean, me and many other journalists quoted him saying, I don't remember the exact quote of how it's hard to be the neighbor of the biggest drug addict in the world. And it's true. I totally understand that. Um, you know, if the U.S. wasn't there, then uh, with its demand, then none of this uh, would have happened, including Edgar's uh, careers and song wouldn't be there. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.